Welcome fellow horror hounds and welcome to the latest episode of Talk and Stalk, your unholy home for horror. I'm your host as always, Barry, and today I'm just going to be talking about a couple of trailers that I watched recently, uh, one of which I watched yesterday, the other was probably about four or five days ago. And uh, one of these trailers, um, the one that I watched yesterday was for Last Night in Soho which is actually scheduled for a, an October release. And this is a horror film I'm very much excited for. This might actually be my most anticipated horror film. Now, I'm a huge Halloween fan. I'm really looking forward to Halloween Kills. I can't wait for the fifth screen movie, which is out in January. This may actually be, though, my most anticipated horror film, certainly of this year. Um, the very moment this film was announced, I was on board. Edgar Wright, you know, director of the likes of Baby Driver, Shaun of the Dead, Hot Fuzz, actually directing his first all-out horror movie. Um, so, you know, a very efficient a director in Edgar Wright. And not only that, um, the fact that this film has actually been said, it's been said that this is a movie that's very much in the vein of uh, genre classics like Don't Look Now and Repulsion. Uh, two great psychological horror films, two of my personal favourites. Um, I was right on board with that. And uh, it was it was scheduled for an April release. It obviously got put back to October. And they actually released the very first trailer, a teaser trailer, um, which actually does show a lot. Even teaser trailers nowadays, it kind of sometimes feels like you've probably seen at least half of the movie, two thirds of the film. And all I'm going to say is this, I did not think I could be more excited for this movie. Um, that trailer was fantastic. Very surrealistic. Very, um, there's a lot of shots that I really do like in this trailer. And a fantastic use of song as well. Uh, it's actually a cover version of Downtown. I'm not actually sure as to who the artist is. But the song perfectly fit the trailer, perfectly fit the tone um, for this movie's trailer. Now, you know, in this movie, uh, this trailer, um, it kind of shows, um, you know, a girl is kind of like seemingly plunged into this into this other world, uh, presumably transported back in time. And uh, there's a definite indicator as to what year this is as well. Uh, because we actually see the theatrical release of Fundable, which was actually Sean Connery's fourth Bond movie, released in 65. So this is presumably set during 1965. Um, Anya Taylor-Joy is in there. Uh, we get a few glimpses of... Um, his name is actually escaping me. Matt Smith, ex-Doctor Who actor. And... Uh, yeah, like I said, there's a very lot, there's a lot of very surrealistic kind of out there moments in this trailer. Uh, some fantastic shots. And it definitely, without a doubt, looks like something um, from Polanski's playbook, you know, from some of his earlier films, <clears throat> notably films like The Tenant and Repulsion. And uh, this could also be said that it looks like an Argento film. As well, this looks like something that could be directed by Argento uh, with a definite red colour palette to this movie as well. Um, it looks incredibly well shot. As I said, a great use of colour. Certainly in the last 20, 25 seconds of this trailer, um, there's actually an awesome shot that I love that, the, uh, that appears right near the end of the trailer. And we actually get to see this main girl's face through uh, the reflection on the other, other blade. Um, great trailer. I'm really excited for this movie. Um, I'm really hoping this can actually be a modern horror classic. I feel like this film has all the right ingredients to be something pretty special. Um, it certainly has the potential to. And, you know, while I feel like this film hasn't really been on that many people's radar. I'm hoping the excellent trailer has actually changed that fact. Um, so yeah, great trailer. It looks really, as I said, very cerebral, very surrealistic. Uh, there's a great shot very early on in the trailer where she goes to the mirror and basically her 
Reflection is Anya Taylor Joy, um, who I believe is a singer in this movie. I'm not sure if there's obviously we don't really know too much about the plot details at this point. I want to go in blind with this anyway. The less I know, the better. And because it's a teaser trailer, it even it, it does show quite a lot. I mean, it's kind of a lot of blink and you'll miss it moments, if you will. I'm going to actively avoid the next trailer. I don't want to see any more. That's it. Um, now, the other trailer that I want to talk about um, is for a fan made film that is actually released tomorrow. And it's a fan made film that I am seriously excited for. I'm really liking the look of this. And this is called um, It's Me, Billy. And this is actually um, an unofficial sequel, if you will, to 1974's Black Christmas, which is without a doubt one of my favourite slasher movies of all time, one of my favourite 70s horror movies. Uh, and this is actually a 42-minute, uh, a 42-minute sequel. And from what I've seen of it, I really like the look of this. They really seem to have done a good job of capturing the spirit and the essence of the original 74 film. It's amazing that this movie, this fan-made film, that is clearly being made by people that have an ardent love for the original film and probably, you know, very good knowledge of the original movie. Um, this looks much better than the 2006 crap we got. You know, I, I do apologise for anyone out there that does like 2006's Black Christmas. That isn't an attack on anyone that does like the film. I don't like it. Hate's a strong word. I don't hate it. But as horror movie remakes go, it's it's by no means one of the better ones out there, in my opinion. Um, whereas this fan-made film um, has clearly made been made by, I believe Dave McRae is actually the director and uh, I'm really looking forward to watching this um, because, again, I'm kind of, a, as I've said many times before, I'm a less is more kind of guy. And uh, they really don't show much in this trailer. Um, you don't actually see much of the killer themselves. Now, you know, Pete, played by Keir Diller in the original, was believed to be the killer. Um, and of course, there's been them rumours, suspicions about that he wasn't actually the killer and the killer, the real killer may actually still be out there. Now, us as the audience, we know that Peter wasn't the killer with the way Black Christmas ends, which I actually thought was a great ending, actually, where we learn that the killer is upstairs and the telephone starts ringing. Um, so I'm just wondering, actually, I, I'm going to assume, I'm going to go out on a limb and obviously say that um, uh, Olivia Hussey's character, her name is actually escaping me at this point, uh, that she actually was killed. Um, Sure, but uh, well, no, actually, she couldn't be, could she? Thinking about it, no, because Peter was killed. So, yeah, maybe this movie, maybe this fan made film will actually address what happened to Olivier, to Olivia. Um, liking the look of it, you know, great sense of claustrophobia, great sense of atmosphere. Um, I think this could be something pretty special, you know, something for the Black Christmas fans out there now, you know. Black Christmas very much does have an Arden fan base. It does have a cult following. And uh, as I said, this just looks 20 times better than the 2006 film. And as for the 2019 film, which I'm still yet to see and actually have no intentions in watching whatsoever, I think it looks terrible. And I don't actually know a single person that actually particularly liked it. Um, so yeah, th this is something for the Black Christmas fans. Uh, so they're just the two trailers that I'm going to talk about. Excited for both of these projects. I will most certainly be watching the uh, It's Me, Billy tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And uh, Last Night in Soho is certainly a film that I want to see on the big screen. I'm a huge fan of psychological horror. And uh, I think psychological horror is very much kind of an acquired taste. Um, you know, 2010's Black Swan, I think, is another really good example of a psychological horror film, of which... Um, the trailer to Last Night in Soho had some kind of echoes. There were little things kind of here and there that certainly kind of like uh, kind of drew me back to uh, to Black Swan. So, uh, yeah, that's all I really want to talk about today. Uh, obviously, regarding trailers, uh, I'd imagine we're going to get Halloween Kills one pretty soon. Uh, probably next month or July, I'd imagine. Uh, really looking forward to the next trailer. At the same time, I'm a little conflicted because as much as I love trailers, at the same time, 
I don't want to go into the film feeling like I've seen everything. That's the problem. I think that's the risk you run sometimes when you watch trailers. And I'm really hoping we get a screen trailer soon as well. I'd imagine we'll probably have one by August, July or August. We'll get a teaser trailer. Um, so, yeah, they're, they're two trailers that I'm certainly waiting for. Um, but, yeah, that's it for today anyway. Uh, thanks a lot to everyone that listened. And I will be back again soon to haunt you and torment you. Take care.